That reminds you of that celebration thing. Hey, everybody, Captain Tommy Scoville. Good morning. It's Saturday, and you're on the lifeboat, and that's my brother, Johnny. How are you? Better than I deserve. Good, good. Matrix Rabbit, good to see you. Tree Hugger, what's happening? Rolling Stone, good to see you. Sorita. Hello. Good to see you. Hey, Davey. Always a pleasure. Yo. Liz Tricks. Jason P, Sandy Wendy, Kristen Melinda. There is that Cheshire cat. Tree hugger. Aaron, how are you? Be listening while you get what? What was that? While you get ready for your kid's birthday party. Very cool. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Show. Work sucks, but watching you makes your day better. Well, Layla, I am happy to hear that. <clears throat> and life's good to me so far one of my all-time favorite songs one of those songs that could turn your day around in like 2.2 seconds even if your say car isn't running or your ankle is rolled or you're just not having a particularly good day that's one of those that can uh, just turn your day around sb good to see you glad you're here hello carol barnhart good morning plant freak today is the day uh kate d good to see you Lori Hart, fractured your wrist. I'm sorry. <laughs> about some thoughts and prayers for Lori Hart and her uh, busted up wrist. That sucks. I love Joe Walsh too, man. Uh, Johnny and I saw um, the Eagles live in concert. And uh, that would have been on July 6th, if I'm not mistaken. Can I have my chapeau? It would have been July 6th. It would have been July 6th. I gave it to uh, you as a birthday present. You remember that? I do. I called my brother and said, hey. How would you like to see the Hell Freezes Over tour in the front row? That's a birthday present right there, huh? For real. Only I lied and it wasn't in the front row. It ended up being in the front row. It ended up being in front of the front row. Pretty, pretty slick seats. Way. Yeah, it started out that way. Right around the time that the uh, ether kicked in, so to speak. Whew, that was one of those shows, man. That was one of those shows. Uh, Melissa Etheridge opened up. I hate the Eagles, man. Get out of my cab. Good. good Lebowski reference there. Good Lebowski reference. Ahoy, Seventh Son. Good to see you this morning. Great name for an album or a tour. You know what's really funny is um, on my first uh, wedding night when I got married, my wife and I were uh, farting around and we were making a list of bands we would have loved to have seen if we could have, whether they were still in business or not. So like the Beatles was on everybody's list, you know, that kind of a thing. And uh the in the top three were uh, the Eagles, and uh, we talked about it at length that night. And I was working at a robotics company, and uh, my wife rang me up and said, "You're not going to believe who's going on tour." And I said, "Who?" And she said, "The Eagles." She said, "Can you guess the name of the tour?" I said, "Hell freezes over." And she's like, "How do you know that?" I was like, "Because every single year they say we're not going on tour. Like the next, when are you going on tour again? When hell freezes over?" They had been saying it for so long that. It seemed like it would have been an obvious <coughs> name. Yeah, Melissa Etheridge, you gotta love her. She came out on stage and she said, you know, I've opened up for a lot of bands. She said, you open up and then you run backstage and you go back to the, uh, she goes, but that seat right there in the front, that's mine. She said, and when this is over, I'm coming down there to watch this concert. For real, she was into it. It was, uh, remember the first song she opened with? That she opened with? Yeah. Come to my window? Come through my window. Yeah. Yeah, and I do the Eagles opened up with Hotel California. Can you imagine that? How about that? Can you imagine just the uh, talk about a flex? That's what I said too. Talk about a flex. We looked at each other like, no way. Oh, Lisa Trimble, you're kidding me, babe. This happened again. Please tell me we're talking about the last one, Lisa. Good God. I had to talk with the police yesterday and fill out a report. Um, this was from the last one, though, right? Please. She has been going through it with the bank. I don't think you have any idea. Well, you know what? Maybe you do. Front row center for the Eagles. Yep. More than once. I saw front row center more than once for the Eagles. I was blessed to catch Hell Freezes Over in three cities. I saw him in Houston. I saw him in Dallas. And I saw him in Nolens. And that was really a good show. Yeah, thoughts and prayers for you, Lisa. It's tough. It really is. It's ugly. Not again, but three times. Good Lord. Yeah, that's ugly. I'm, uh, but I'm glad that uh, you're getting it taken care of. Bob Seeger. Yeah, Seeger's fantastic, man. 
Seeger's amazing. I, I have a, I've told the story so many times on the boat that nobody wants to hear it again, but I'll do it one more time real quick. I was working as a public speaker and uh, we were on the road. Yeah. Okay. Johnny, we were on the road as a public, I was working as a public speaker. I was with my, my uh, boss Rex says to me, uh, I need you at 9 AM tomorrow. And I, and they used to call me Rip Van Winkle. Cause I never showed up for the 9 AM speaker meetings. Because 9 a.m. seemed to me to be a really stupid time to have a meeting if I didn't go to work until 5 o'clock at night. But anyway, um, I usually really was playing golf or waiting to play golf or not quite awake yet. But of this uh, uh, particular morning, I actually showed up for the, uh, the the speaker meeting, which very rarely happened. Thank God it's Saturday long week. I'm uh, going to have an uncle and niece day today. Oh, I love that, Jason P. Very cool. Have fun. Uh, so I go down to this meeting and we're sitting at a, a table. It's got about nine chairs at it. And there was some road crew there and, uh, four speakers, including my boss. And, uh, I looked over and went, man, that dude is out. <laughs> right. And I pointed and over at the table, there was a guy whose face was on the table. I mean, square nose pressed flat on the table and like, seven or eight highball glasses on the table around him. He had been uh, definitely uh, putting it away. And uh, my boss goes, that looks like uh, Bob Seeger. And I'm like, I, I don't think that's Bob Seeger. I said, but it does kind of look like Bob Seeger. I had the beard and all that. Well, as it turns out, it was Bob Seeger. And uh, when they came over to bring us our breakfast, I said to the guy, hey, man, that dude over there. And he goes, that's Bob Seeger. I said, maybe you want to get him out of here, man. You know, just uh, to be kind to uh, to Mr. Seeger, maybe don't uh, maybe don't let him uh, be passed out in the uh, in the restaurant. So they uh, they went and got him and helped him out while we were having our meeting. Then I went upstairs and when I got up to the uh, the hallway uh, for the floor I was on, I stepped out of the elevator and out into the hallway were some cowboy boots. So Bob had apparently gotten about three feet inside the door and his feet were out in the hallway. So I called downstairs and said, hey, uh, Mr. Seeger uh, needs a little assistance up here, maybe uh, helping him get into his room. And uh, some guys came up from uh, downstairs and that's just what happened. I helped, uh, helped Bob get into his room. First day listening, recommended by your friend Valerie. Donna, welcome to the lifeboat. It is an honor to have you. And we're, uh, we're big friends of your friend Valerie. So you. Uh, you you come with pedigree, so to speak. Where is Squirrel? Are you kidding? That man was just uh, playing with the squirrel. No, you're not angry. Yeah. You're not angry. You're pointing. <laughs> you. I know you. Yeah, I know I you. Uh, you're not angry. Uh, anybody get? Uh, if anybody got that reference, nobody's going to get that reference. Nobody's going to get that nobody's reference. Get that In reference. fact, I'm going to send you a tube of tariff. Anybody can get that reference. But you gotta get Did you hear that? that? You got to get that reference. Visiting mom in the nursing home yesterday, you're she sang mad. three karaoke songs. And it was amazing to see her smile and enjoy herself. Sweet tea. I'm so glad you said this. People who struggle with memory loss, karaoke is one of the greatest things in the world for people who struggle with memory loss because we can forget all kinds of things. But that song that you sang a million times and that song that you heard throughout your entire life, it is etched into your brain. And I have found the brain is a fantastic thing. And when you start getting it to work, other neat things happen. So sometimes just getting a person to start remembering something can get some really cool things. Uh, um, Donna, well, um, we're glad that you're here. Eager to listen, learn, and share. Well, you're in the right place, man. You are in the right place. Music is also in the muscle memory, Avina, to be sure, right? And we happen to know this for a fact that uh, the part of our brain that... Um, that remembers things, especially the part of our brain that remembers things on autopilot, right? We refer to this part of the brain as the striatum um, and where certain things are located, like our ability to process the olfactory senses and the auditory senses are so close to that part of the brain that it does seem that we etch lyrics into our brain. D. Audrey Gore says, I still remember most of the song lyrics from GNR when I was 14. 14. That, means, that means that we were about the same age there, uh, the Audrey Gore. The Audrey Gore and I are about the same age. I'm, I'm a little older. I'm a little older. I like my girls a little bit younger. Uh, comment. My PTSD scores went from 64 to 28. I'm sorry. What? Tree hugger. People, you know what that is? 
That is no lie, hard and true, factual, this person is succeeding numbers. Tree hugger, you're, <coughs> not, and I think it would be CPTSD, uh, right? Because I don't, I think CT, uh, CPTSD is the only one where they're actually doing that, um, that scoring system, unless I'm mistaken. But your CPD, uh, PTS, and I like the, uh, I don't like the disease as much as the injury. But anyway, your scores went from 64 to 28. That's epic in eight months. That's epic. Congratulations. That's not us. That's you, right? That's you working on yourself. That's work. you journaling. Absolutely right, man. Putting in the work. That is not something that happens because you show up here and listen to people and talk. That's somebody putting work in to make themselves a better person. For real, a better human being. How good is that? Uh, I took Spanish for uh, five years and all I remember are the songs. Well, that checks out. It makes perfect sense, right? We the people in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility. To provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and then, yeah, freshman year in college, the guy said, Boy, I want everybody to learn the preamble of the Constitution by Monday. And everybody in the room just looked around like, what are you, woofing me? I can sing the preamble to the Constitution now. And everybody in the room literally, like, burst into uh, into the, uh, the preamble of the Constitution, sung perfectly, by the way. Let me tell you, whoever did away with that... It was just a mistake. Do you know why it was Got done it away with? The SATs. Do you know why it was done away with? No lie. Do you know why Schoolhouse Rock was done away with? This is very interesting. I'm not, not going to like the answer. You're Go not going to like the Go answer. Ahead. You're not going to like the answer. Go ahead. I'm going to see if anybody throws it out, though. So I'm stalling a little here, Johnny Scoville, because it's about a 30 second delay. Church is chicken. Little hint there. Conjunction, junction. What's your function? That's a good one. Okay. I, of all of the ones, I think energy is the best just because it is really no lie blues. Like the dude singing energy, it's you see the earth, right? And the earth is what's singing. You see the mouth all energy. It's like some really serious, heavy, bluesy stuff. Delta blues, baby. Yeah, exactly. That is a throwback. That is a throwback. I like earworming people. I got uh, I got um, uh, Tampa B man the other day beautifully. She actually uh, sent me a text to complain afterwards. I got her with I shouldn't do it to you, but I but I'm oh, gonna. We'll get some coffee. We're talking. Oh, about. see, yeah, no, he's, he's trying to he's coffee. trying to run Wait from. I get my coffee. Lolly, 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 uh, get, get your adverbs. adverbs. Yeah, that the lolly oh, yeah. adverb oh, song yeah. is really the tough one. Have I heard three by Blind Melon, the math song? I was told, Kestrel, I was told that there would be no math. So, no, I have not. You know what you got to do every once in a while? Every once in a while, you got to do this. I'm just making sure I'm calling you from the deck of the lifeboat because I didn't see your name and I just want to make sure that everything is all right. I'm fairly fond of you and haven't seen you on the deck of the boat in a while. Do reach out and tell me you're okay. Love you, bye. Every once in a while, you got to just ring up somebody on the boat if you haven't seen them in a minute. Makes you nervous. You got to say, hey, how you doing? And it's fun to do it while you're live. It, uh, it guilts them into coming back. Dennis from Boston says, the week flew by. Uh, great boat this week. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. And I'm glad to hear that it flew by. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. And now I'm all. To the line where I sit here and wait. Well, if you key congressmen discuss and debate about whether I should ever be alone, well, I hope and pray that I will. But today I am still just a bill. <laughs> That'll keep you in your dome all day. No, the baby shark song, we're not going there. Matrix Rabbit. All right, we're not going there. I still love you, but that baby shark song is over the edge. I had a feeling you might be. I was a lurker that, uh, yeah. you know, I like the word lurker. I used to not like the word lurker, but I'm starting to really dig the word lurker. Uh, you know what, Debbie Logan? Um, I talk all the time about um, one of my friends was a, a prostitute that I used to hang out with when I did uh, heroin. Her name was Sherry, one of the sweetest people you would ever meet on planet Earth. She had the build. She had the little guy. Right. They made a little like figure about the size of what Smurfs used to be. Right. The little. Um, you know, figurines, things, but she had the guy 
who was holding the thing and it had the bill on him, right? The, yeah, she had it. And while I was in her apartment one day, we were talking and uh, I had a bunch of dope and uh, she didn't have anything. And she said, uh, hey man, I'll give you that um, that bill guy for three bags. And hindsight being 2020, I really wish I had done it. I did the nice guy thing and I went, nah, man, you can have some dope. You know, you don't need to give me that. But I guarantee she ended up giving it to somebody else and I should have taken it. But thank you, my friend from Israel. Loved the call when you called in, man. So many people reached out to me about that call in particular. And it's probably because of where you are in the world. But so many people reached out and said, you know, the call from Israel really kind of just hit home to the fact that we really are a family. We really all do kind of stick together and, uh, and look out for one another, right? Totally Scooby, totally. another perfect example. Scoob, no lie. I got nine emails yesterday from people that said, please check on Scooby and make sure Scoob's all right. Nine people who just didn't know how to get a hold of you, but were worried about you. That's got to make you feel good, man. You had Mr. Bill from Saturday night uh, from SNS, like the Mr. Bill. Oh no, Mr. Bill, like that Mr. Bill. Don't bring me down. Bruce. I don't think he says Bruce. I think I had to look that up once. Say I don't what think... you want. He sure did in 84. It, it sounds like he says Bruce. That's what in 84. You stop that, Johnny Scobo. Split screen. Greatest split screen of the morning. Well, there you go. Check this out. You got to love that. Also, you can't see this. <laughs> I've met several prostitutes in my life. Most of them are incredibly caring and generous people. I, it's been about a, been, been a, uh, been a hit or miss thing. I, uh, I never, um, I was friends with a ton of them. It's a heroin has uh, that kind of, um, you, uh, you end up running in, in uh, circles of people that have to do things to get their drug. So you run into a lot of prostitutes and I would say about 80% of them were uh, some of the kindest people that I've ever met. Garus is what they say. Apparently says Ben said Bacon that. Bits Turner. I believe. It. I trust him. I believe it. it's Ben Turner, right? If it had been somebody now, else, hang on. Do we know what that means? No. Do, no, we do Ben know because I'm. I got ben, we know what that ben means. No, Ben seems solid. I got well, narcolip know. narcoleptic Chihuahua production says he says Garus. He, he does. So somebody hooked me up with what Garus means. What's Garus all about? See, we're always going once, huh? Are you sure he's not saying Groot? Remember that guy? I am Groot, right? Ben, what is Groot? I don't know. I, I dated a girl that was pretty Groot. Groot in the chorus. Don't no, I dated a girl. It's a made-up word that Jeff Wynn used for a temporary placeholder in lyrics. There you go. I, I beg to differ because Groot, to me, I've met a girl that was Groot. Was she? Occasionally, you'd see her doing this one and then... We saw that yesterday in travel. We did see somebody. We saw, we saw somebody yesterday. eat a booger yesterday in travel. I said, here's the thing. I didn't know who. I could, it was a little smoke at the window. I said, it was I don't, tinted. I don't know tinted. what it is on the left, but they're digging two knuckles deep. That is just what Johnny said. I can't make out if this is a man or a woman, so but they're his, two knuckles deep. So I did this he one. He swung his head to the left. Just in time. And caught this. Yeah. Just in time to see that come back out. And then they went in. Yeah, and it was particularly gruesome. If you want to know the truth, it was gruesome. Oh, we and it like, brought me down. Oh no! And it brought me down, Bruce. It was so gruesome. That's where it, it came brought from. me down. Somebody in the band <laughs> did that. Yes, yeah, so there was a, there was down. a booger eater in that band. I think that that's what it is. For those who have PTSD or C PTSD, I suggest a very good book. It's The Invisible Machine, absolutely by Jamie Mustard. A must read if you want to learn about trauma. It is. Uh, it's a. a uh, a must read and it'll probably bring one of my lurker friends out. I know a lurker that's uh, fond of that book might just pop up and say, Oh, I know that book. It's funny how uh, lurkers can do that. Well, you know what? I missed something here though. Didn't I love I my boat it. coffee mug. Highly recommended. Woohoo. Nothing you know like what? drinking a little uh, lifeboat coffee in the morning. But this is a touch screen. Get right out of here. Just found that out. Isn't that something? Johnny Scoville just found out that his computer's a touchscreen. People, I don't want to tell you how long Johnny's owned this computer because I'm not the kind of guy to uh, oh, cash man, I shade. Twelve hours. The problem. You've been playing with it for how long? Twelve hours. Okay. And it just now. Good morning. I just woke up and got my coffee, Patty. I'm glad you have. When is the next live with calling in? Let's see here. Uh, can't wait to call again. Uh, that live is probably going to be this evening. Actually, we're going to be doing a Saturday night boat. Does look a little bit like a merchandise plug. Uh, it's been known to happen. It has been known to happen. Bro, I never plugged any merchandise. Nice. 
far, far be it from you. I wouldn't do that. We got a, oh, come on, Johnny. Yeah. That'd be shame, shameless. Shameless plugging. I, I hate that kind of, uh, of rampant promotion. Right? For real. You would it's, it's, it's disgusting. It really is. It's, uh, it's certainly not my choice, but it is the choice of a new generation. Right? <laughs> Ah, the only thing I will not shill is the shill itself. Is the Vegemite? There are boat coffee mugs. There are. They are boat coffee mugs. Chase the coffee mug too, by the way. I'm course, not. I'm not so sure. There is. I'm not so sure there are Chase the Heat mugs. Are you I sure? Know what? I have them on the website. Never owned one. Do you post the number to call in, Paula Pendley? We do post the number to call in. Dang it! Now you want a Dr Pepper? Well, here's the deal. The there's, no, day, there's no Dr. Pepper. I Googled the 23 natural flavors. Yes, I'm you did. Talk about them. You I'm did. Them. I know what they are. Shannon Smith says, please just eat the Vegemite. Um, will surprise you. Probably not going to happen. I'll take there, a figure there are I'll lifeboat take a hoodies. There are lifeboat hoodies. People, if you go to the top and you and it, where it says the lifeboat, you can go over to about and it's going to list you all of those things like merch and all that stuff. There you go, Johnny Scoville. You know I know you're a fan. Oh, and look at this. We have got not just foulness, but foulness abounds. Abounds. Just get away. Honestly, breathe it in. <laughs> Come on. Hold on a second. Tell me that that's a different smell. If your eyes were shut, you couldn't tell me the difference. Shut up, I sure could. No, you couldn't. That's I why couldn't. you're smiling. Look at him, people. You can't tell the difference between the smell of an aspirin and the smell of that poison that you just, you're not going to, you're literally going to, no. No, oh, why would you do that? I've been doing <sighs> a taste comparison between Marmite, which is lovely. Hey, if you reach down to your left and give me the bowl grill, I'll do the three. Because that bowl right there. Here's the difference with this. If you did this with Vegemite, stuff's going to end up on the floor. You could. You mean with, with Marmite. Marmite? You could do this with this all day long. It's not going anywhere. Volunteer work today? I love that, brother. I am a big fan of volunteer work. Uh, Johnny, have you tried? Um, he says, spice is nice. Just got blazing Asian hot sauce. Have you tried that? Oh, you're doing more of that garbage? I'm going to keep reading. Well, I'm going to keep reading this comments. This could be the Blazing Asian you're talking about. That could be the Blazing Asian hot sauce. Well, see, we'll give you a little pre sneak preview. Throw me one of the this. new sauce from uh, this, people. Do, 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 do. And the reason that I have. Why is it, Johnny Scoble, that you're sitting on a bunch of church's chicken hot sauce? And a shirt. Are you uh, are you doing something with uh, Church's chicken there, Johnny Scuttle? I might. Are we related? What, me and him? Mm -hmm. um, hold on a second. You're so bad. Lean in here a little. No. No. He does look a little like me, though. That is my older brother, uh, Johnny. Johnny is, um, if you've never seen Johnny before, Johnny's the famous Scoville brother. Oh. No, you are. I mean, of the two of us. Every single day, somebody thinks I'm a him. It's actually How many times very, very have people funny. walked up and said hi to me and didn't know who you were? It's never happened. No, that doesn't. That not doesn't one. Happen. Not one time ever. In fact, one time you with Mama Scoville. Shannon Smith, I'm gonna. You, I am gonna answer that. I promise. Somebody walked up to you and said, uh, "Which one the, are you? The, which one are you? She which goes, one are you? He goes, what? No, which one are you? Are you the drug one or the chilly one? <laughs> yeah, no. He goes. He, he goes. Are you the you the pepper one or the drug one? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't even drug. It was prison. That's what he said. Are you the are you the are you the pepper one or the prison one? I said, I'm the prison one. That's even better. Dirty Mouse, you can order the protein balls in the exact same place, right? You just go over and check out that list. God, that's you go down there. Now, as Schoolhouse Rock was canceled, since nobody got this, the both of us rock. Well, how about that? Uh, Schoolhouse Rock was canceled because of the fact that it had been determined that it was propaganda. Now. We knew it was propaganda. But there's such a thing as good propaganda. There used to be such a thing as good propaganda. The really crazy thing is this. We passed a law. We passed a law that we were going to do without propaganda. Where we were going to get rid of it. And we would not do any propaganda to our own people. 
That law was repealed under Barack Obama. They changed the law. However, they're not showing schoolhouse rock. So whatever they're doing with that, uh, with the change of that law, they uh, they they're not doing it to make it better. <laughs> they're doing it to make uh, to make it so that they can. Um, hold on one second. I'm going to get back to you here shortly, brother. I'm actually doing a live, which is not a big deal. It probably sounds like it is, but it's not. But I promise you, I'm going to get back to you when this is done. So uh, I'll be getting up with you here in a bit. The only calls I'll take when I'm doing a stream are uh, Bree, you, or. Do you know why I took, do you know why I did this one? I'll tell you straight out. I'll tell you why I did this one. This is um, this is somebody that has a uh, gold mine. No joke. Oh, is that the goal? Yeah. So this there is sitting some, on a gold mine. That he's sitting on a gold mine. That? He's literally sitting on a gold mine. Permission to come uh, aboard, granted, Cindy. Please come aboard. Um, there is a person out there that loves what we do so much that they're trying to get this uh, gold mine up and running again. It shut down for uh, the C plus math when that came on. And the person running ended up going to running the mine ended up going to South America, but the mine had pulled about five million dollars worth of gold out in the previous season, so it had done pretty well. And they're talking about getting this mine fired back up, and they reached out to me, and I thought, well, that's kind of cool, right? That's a very cool thing. And uh, they would like to uh, have some of the uh, some of the precious metal that comes out of that uh, ground uh, be allocated to the boat in perpetuity. Now, it if you have to look, the, if you have to look that word up because I might have, uh, what it'll say is it's never going to stop. It's going to, for as long as that thing pulls stuff out of the, uh, um, of the ground, the boat would be getting some. So we're going to, we're going to hope that that, uh, that that comes to fruition because boy, oh boy, would that be good. Um, it would allow me to get a lot more people on the medical assisted treatment. I just threw up in my mouth a little bit for real here. Would you like to chew an aspirin? Yeah. Huh? Because yeah, it'll probably taste very similar. It smells certainly an awful lot like it. There you go. I have an a little back problem this morning. Yeah. You swallowed it? Oh, if you chewed it, it tasted it like. With, oh, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Tasty. Tasty. What was Dudley Do Right's horse's name? I don't remember. Do you? Do Right. But I used to love how, uh, what's his name, would uh, say his name. Snidely Whiplash. I hate him. He drives me to drink. You remember? <laughs> He'd sit down at the bar and do like 67 shots in two seconds. I used to love that. The Dover Boys. No, no, over here, over here. No, no, over here, over here. But his name was Horace. Yes, I could make my own watch from mining metals. That would be very cool. I have, I have the movements. I am working on the movements right now. I was planning on putting them into a uh, into a brass case. Um, serial number one is actually going to seventh son, but uh, all of the other ones after that are going to be uh, up for grabs. But serial number one is going to go to seventh son, unless he wants serial number seven. But I'm going to give him the first shot at it because he's been uh, been a watch guy with me now for a while. <laughs> Uh, horse was his name. Well, that makes sense. Patty Collins says horse was his name. Um, all right. One with cats. You have a hobbit twin. Good God. There's two of you. Yeah. That's just a shame. Not that there's two of you. A few many times we've got that over the years. Oh my God. There's two of you. Yeah. How many times does that happen? Sometimes you it's know, a really good. They, they can't. Oh my God. There's two of you. They canceled Schoolhouse Rock for a reason. I'm, I'm not going to make any friends. And guess what? I don't care. But here's what happened. A long time ago, we had a split. And one party said, we're going to get everything we can into the education system. We're going to do everything we can to try to uh, educate. Now, you could call it propaganda if you want. But Hollywood certainly leans in one direction, whether you like that or not. I don't care one way or the other. I really don't. But they certainly lean in one direction. And it used to kind of be balanced out. Um with you don't think we look that similar shannon wow I, every single time we go out somebody will come up and say are you two twins and we get it but every maybe day. you got to see us in public maybe every you need day. to see us yeah if we do we get interact it. with people we'll get it every, every day. day we really do we get it every single day but my mom says the same thing she doesn't think that we look alike at all and that funny you know the weird thing is i get people tell me my whole life who i look like yeah they never like they've been telling him he looks like vin diesel and he does for for 30 years. 30 yeah, years. I've been hearing that a no lot. one has ever said to me, do you look like Vin Diesel? But uh, I get De Niro. De Niro. I've never had one never person had never had one person tell me but I look like Robert De Niro. Side, you look like or uh, Steve, I get Steve Martin a lot. Never got that. You never got that. Nope. 
and you used to get what was that rock star from the 80s that everybody when the 80s were uh Oh, the eye wearing my sunglasses. Yeah, Corey, yeah. Hart. Corey Hart, man, yeah, in brutal. the '80s, because Johnny had he had some Corey Hart hair. You used to lie and say you were Corey Hart. No, yeah. but I had women that would run up to me and thinking I was. I uh, I lied once in a uh, in a grocery store and said I was Vin Diesel, but that's because I was with Spanky and this. Uh, and this place he place. was a little kid, and this this woman came up with her daughter, and they had a like a DVD thing, and <laughs> Spanky was like three or four. You know, he's really, really small. And uh, this girl goes, Mr. Diesel, will you sign this? And I just went. <laughs> you signed that, and I started to giggle. And Calhoun went, sign it, Mr. Diesel. He was like three. I was like, uh, do you have a pen? She's like, no. I'm like, well, if you get a pen, I'll sign it. That's funny. I grew a beard in college, a full beard. First time, only time I ever had a full beard. And this kid ran across campus one day. He's probably maybe 12, 14 years old, runs up to me, asked me if I was Kenny Loggins. Ah, that's great. I did that day, but the same day, I was in a grocery store, and a little kid was terrified of me. And he was grabbing his mom. He was, Mom, he looks like Satan. <laughs> I shaved my beard that day. Don't you? Wow. I know. Wow. Yeah, you betcha. My mother has to look at the background pictures to know if it's me or my little sister. Kate, that's funny. That is really funny. Um. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. I, I really wish that we would bring back um, civics. You know, the fact that the fact that kids that graduate high school today can't tell you how many states we have is a problem. We haven't had a president a lot. The last five presidents could. You know who's big into civics? Screamed about it? Frank Zappa. Yeah. Oddly Frank enough, Zappa, Zappa, Zappa was super into it. Zappa was, was a big man. proponent of Schoolhouse Rock. He was like, you can actually dude. find clips of film of him talking about Schoolhouse Rock. It's true. Yep. You want to see a picture of uh, Johnny and his Corey Hart face, please. I will get that. If you go over to Johnny Scoville on uh, Instagram, the underscore Johnny Scoville, um, you will uh, you I'm will see pictures. Two seconds, people. I know, but it's hard holding the phone up. It just looks ridiculous. Okay, well, I, I don't have the ability to do it correctly. Do it this way. Hang it's on, still man. not. Uh, we have two states. Yes, sober and wasted. Uh, sadly, we spend a, a decent amount of time in the. Uh, Wait a second. Don't be putting down Loggins. He is an 80s movie soundtrack machine. Footloose, Top Gun, Caddyshack. Would that cause a problem? No. So there are the Scoville brothers circa 1985. On a beach in Bermuda. On a beach in Bermuda. Yeah. That was the Corey Hart uh, days of, uh, of Johnny Scoville. Cup of coffee. You can do the fifty states in alphabetical order. That's impressive. I can't Wicked do that. Impressive. I can. I can oh. knock out. I can knock out the fifty without problem. How many a problem people with. do you think in the United States can do that? A hundred? I don't. Not a lot. Not that's, a, that's a small number. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, that is pretty impressive. Um, it's uh, that is pretty impressive. Ones for dirty mouse. I'm all about that. There's some ones out there. I wear my sunglasses at night. You're still depressed that Aaron didn't have a mullet? You know, you gotta... Do you know that he didn't? I feel like he's a little young for the mullet, so maybe mom didn't, uh, you know. But I don't know. A lot of people lie about the mullet, man. A lot of people lie about the mullet. You know, they don't want to come clean. Um, oh. They don't They don't want to come clean with the fact that they've sported a mullet. I rock the mullet, man. I, I did really dig a mullet. Uh, Nifty 50, wrote by Ray Charles. In Thank fact, you, gentlemen. There's a picture. There's a picture. Of there, your eye. there side is a high side, like two majestic bucks in a field with sporting our crazy mullets. I uh, like something off of it, like a, a, a spoof commercial from that. Ed, that no ed. joke whatsoever. No joke whatsoever. Like, it's brutal. I do remember Zoom. I bet you he does too. Do you remember the the show Zoom? Yeah, I didn't know it was a Boston show, but I do remember Zoom. That was Boston. Well, that's what he kidding. says. No, but I remember Zoom. I so too. would my sister. I guarantee you, my sister would too. Um, Business in the front, party in the rear. That's right. I have a uh, I have a picture of me and uh, Johnny Scoville that looks like no joke. It looks like. Like when Spinal Tap, in the movie Spinal Tap, when they go back and show you the pictures of them, <laughs> listen to what the flower people say. It's like that. 
It looks like such a spoof of us trying yeah. to show you what it looks like. Zero, two, one, three, four. Um, yes, if you were to uh, if you were to see the picture of us, it does not look real at all. It, it looks, looks like, like we were going to make a do- mockumentary. A mockumentary. Let's make them look like hillbillies from 1985. Right. Let's let's uh, let's do the uh, mullet thing from the. Uh, so I got on a shirt that's like, uh, it's not quite white. It's probably like an eggshell, which was kind of kicking back then. Did, do I have a post in the tie? Is there a post? If not, you do. One of us probably did because that was big then. My tie is razor thin. You got to go like this to see if I'm actually wearing it. If I turn the wrong way, you won't t- can't see it. It was bad. It was pretty awful. It was pretty awful. You know what we should do? We should get it. Should you know, it. I don't, I don't know that. Fine. Here's the, the deal. I know where it is. Today. So do I. Here's the problem with that, though. If we do that, it's a screenshot, and tomorrow it's on the internet. Yeah. It's <laughs> permanent. <laughs> Forever. You, you, do, you know where the hard, you, the real one is? Like in the frame? It, it's in a box. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't know that I want to see it, man. I loved the mullet, says Debbie Logan. Damn right, man. The mullet was great. How, How you know, long was What's the longest yours ever got? Um. I mean, it was. You never had a Joe Dirt one. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I did. Mine was ever Not only did I have, now, I didn't quite but I hit had it real short in front. I didn't hit Billy Ray Cyrus. I didn't get that long. But not only did I have it, but at one point I had it, and the bottom right hand corner of it was white. Okay. See, all Axel did was grow up a top, and, and he was Axel. Yeah, looking like Spanx, looking cool. Spanky was it's, wicked. Axel, you realize he had on he had on the big to. headband this oh, morning. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, he's got a, he does that sway thing. No, he, thing. He, he really can pull off uh, Axel. See, here's the then thing. Then you told they, the kid, I am Bruce. Exactly. Then he gets it. <laughs> That's fine. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Layla. That's a rough song, man. Which one? Layla. Layla? Think about it. Oh, I don't want to think about it. I know. Imagine if you're part one of the three. And uh-huh. I hear that song all the time. It'd just be like rugged. I like it'd be a reason never to turn a radio on again. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google it. The mullet is totally back. All the high school baseballers here are rocking the mullet. Now it's true. I've seen now, it. Now, before you get too crazy on that though, baseballers never ever let go of the mullet. It's the truth. Every season we got a couple of baseballers that 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 Who rocked the that mullet. Super tall dude that had the mullet. What was his name? Mullet. No. It should have been. Yeah. Donna says, I'm a retired hairdresser, like 38 years of clients, what was his name? and all kinds of haircuts. Sorry, not fond of the mullet. I uh, I can see that. I mean, I uh, I absolutely can see that. Nevertheless, I'm a fan. I really was. You know why? I see a mullet and I just go, duh. I mean, it's just the 80s. You know what I mean? Randy Johnson rocked a mullet. Oh, boy, did he. See? It's a perfect example. Oh, boy, did he. No, he, he, he had a mullet. And with all due respect, that cat kind of looked like, well, you know. Oh, six foot nine, 180 pounds. Yeah, he's, he's a little, a lanky wanker. A lanky wanker. That's what it is, a lanky wanker. To my friends on the other side of the pond, please tell me you appreciated uh, Johnny's lanky wanker reference. Come on. Yeah. Beautiful. It's a, well, you know. Not everyone can wear the mullet with success. No, no, that's true. Um, I'll tell you what, you know what else is not easy to pull off is the bullet. Now here's the thing. You can't, not everybody can pull off the mullet today. Back in the day, everybody, anybody yeah, can no, wear a mullet. Yeah, that's the truth. Back but then, today, anybody. you got to, you got to, because you know what you're getting into. You're bringing something back. It's like trying to pull off bell bottoms. Google Do you know bell bottoms are everywhere, man? Um, People are rocking bell bottoms everywhere. Mountaineer mama. My great nephew is a high school football player. He brought the mullet back to the local high school well good for, good for him. him good good for, for him. him good for him i like it hey like it danger zone what i'm all right we to the danger zone hanging with the boys foot loose meet me halfway nobody's fool nice. if i'm not mistaken every single time one of those gets mentioned on family guy they drop a hot tub off on uh on his uh on his balcony in uh, Colorado. Which is stunning because when they bring it in, it's, the water's already in it. It's hot and bubbly. It's stunning. Kestrel rocked a mullet. No kidding. Didn't see that coming. Uh, Randy Johnson stands six foot ten. I think you're just uh, reinforcing Johnny's lanky wanker theory. Six ten. It's a tall. Uh, it's a tall guy. You almost said it. It's a. 
that is an AP of nothing but soundtrack hits. Well, yeah, he was the 80s. Make no mistake. Filling up your radio, listen to how and roll. Yeah, he had a few that just caught fire. Yeah. Well, if it weren't for little Tommy playing volleyball in his jeans with boots on, that definitely helped. No, dreads are not well accepted, man. To be to be sure, dreads are not well accepted. He says, my dreads hit my shoulders when state legalized hemp. Should have added dreads to the law. Not well accepted at times. You know, I'll be really honest, man. Uh, the first time I shaved my head, uh, it, I was shaving my head a long time ago. Like the, I got the writing on the wall really early. Like when I started the, at the very first sign of going thin on top, I was like, bah, I'm done. I'm not doing this. I'm not, didn't I? Like I, I tapped out, I, but I shaved my head right around the same time as the movie Natural Born, Born Killers came out. Literally, like at the exact same time. And the first time I left my home, I went to a 7-Eleven. I went in to buy some stuff for, for Spanx Calhoun. And the cop standing at the coffee machine took the snap off of his gun and then put his hand back down all cool. And I, I walked straight over to him, like just boof, like a beeline. I went, what the hell was that? What are you doing with your uh, snap there, Barney Fife? He goes, what are you talking about? I said, you just took the snap off your pistol. And he goes, oh, I do that all the time. It's a habit. I was like, you're a liar too, is what you are, man. But um, I've always been impressed by women who can rock a shaved head. I don't think it'll work on you. I'll be honest. I don't think it works on any woman. I don't. I just love hair, I guess, on a woman. I, I You know, Brittany looks beautiful without hair. She did. I've seen a ton of women who look beautiful without hair, but I do prefer women with hair. Sinead O'Connor. Sinead O'Connor was absolutely gorgeous without hair. She really was. But she didn't really go bald. She just went really, really short. Ah, oh, makes sense. Uh, so that is why helicopters were not deployed. Okay. Okay. Grace Jones did look good without hair. She looks scary. I, I, she frightened me. Never, ever saw as anything but a frightening. Calhoun girl. says the bald thing is a terrible trend. Uh, well, get back to me in three or four years, Calhoun. You know, when you right. start, actually, he won't. He's got, all he's right. not thinning at all. But as you get older, you know, the other option though, Calhoun, is um, this thing here where you, uh, I thinned out a little bit on top. Um, I, uh, I was rocking what could be called a bullet. It looks a little like, um, oh, I don't know, Phil Collins. So if you take my dome and Bruce Willis from here up, indistinguishable. I have a I have a, a head that is uh, oh for women uh I I I'm not a fan of um I'm not a fan of women without uh, without hair but you know what um bald is not a trend it's life <laughs> Shannon Smith says I like my hair and I'm not shaving it I like your hair Shannon Smith and I haven't even seen it right trust me um. For women, it's a trend. I don't like it, Calhoun. I agree with you. I'm going to agree with you 100% on this one. I don't like it. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, let's just pick any of our friends. Midnight Show. Don't think uh, Arlo would look as good bald. Tracy Range. Again, don't think she'd look as good bald. Reese, on the other hand. I think we should knock Reese's hair back and see what it looks like. What do you think, Calhoun? Um, oh, Cindy Collins. That'll do it. That will absolutely do it. Uh, I sat at a table during the... Um, at a uh, blackjack table. I was at a casino when the Columbine shooting happened. And I was at a, a table with four women. So I was the fifth person at the table. Normally they'll deal about six, uh, six hands, but we took over the table. Like we weren't letting anybody else uh, sit down. And it was like doing a show with Reese. Like these, these women were flirty and fun and we were just, but all of them had a thing tied around their hair. And when I sat down, I, you know, I sat down and was bald and the woman said to me, oh, I love your haircut. And I said, thanks. I've been rocking this for a long time. And she said, that's what I have under here. And I said, oh, I said, uh, you know, you are you guys all? Uh, she said, yeah. She said, we actually blew off treatment today. We all go in at the same time, she said, but we blew off treatment, said, let's go gambling. I said, I love that. And I sat and drank with these uh, ladies. We were having the best day. I mean, honestly, we were laughing our asses off. And then that damn Columbine thing came on every single TV. I'll never forget it. I'll remember those women forever. Like it was, it was just one of those things where we really were laughing and it was just all of a sudden like getting, uh, 
hit in the stomach. It was pretty ugly. But they were they were three people who were as beautiful without hair as any people uh, that had it. Um, yeah, you know what? Uh, I have a I have a, a female friend who uh, who is bald, not by choice. What do they call it? Al alopecia. Mm -hmm. Is that the right word? Yes, sir. Yeah, she has alopecia. But what what happened is, if for her, it would be she would get like one part of her head um, that would lose hair, the rest of it. And she fought for a while and then just said, I'm going, uh, I'm going bald, but is she keeps her head really, really tanned. And uh, yeah, she's just, uh, but I think she would probably be beautiful no matter what she did. She's one of those people. Wesley John Holmes said, I had a mohawk, but never a mullet. I always wanted a mohawk. You never had a mohawk? Not a really good one. No. Every summer there was a kid who got a mohawk in the summertime. Yeah. That wasn't Mama Scoville. No, Mama mohawk. Scoville was not not much for putting up with the haircuts. No. But, uh, I'll tell you what. I went with Scott, my friend. We went into town and uh, Eli was with us. He got the bat symbol shaved in the back of his head ha. for a quarter ounce of weed. Somebody bet him a quarter ounce of weed. He wouldn't <laughs> do it. And I said to him, the guy was like, he goes, do you think this dude will pay off? I'm like, if he shave, doesn't pay off, we'll, we'll break his legs. Right? If, if, if he doesn't uh, pay off, we'll break his legs. Because it was part of the deal. He had to leave it in there for a while. Or could you shave it the next day? No, you could have shaved it the next day. But he put a big old bat symbol in the back of his head. And it was perfect, by the way. The woman nailed it. She did a great job on it. But all I did was shave my head. And uh, ugh, I came home with the... Um, I, you know who I looked like? Brian Bosworth. I had, like, I was spiked here. It was like a really wide mohawk is what it was. Like, I had nothing on the sides. But I was really spiked up on top. Pressure, yeah. yeah, that was my uh, my senior year she for football. Like yeah, mom wasn't a fan. She was not a big fan. Uh, your high school were the Redskins, so all of uh, I don't think we have any Redskin schools left. Uh, so all of the males had mohawks. Well, the um, that is the mascot for um, that shirt you see me wear, Salonica. That they're the mohawks, right? Weren't they the Salonica uh, mohawks? Look that up and see. Bell bottoms and clogs. No, 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 says uh, Wesley John Holmes. You know, I don't dig the bell bottom things. Um, I don't know, man. I, I I think that, ooh, Brenda says, I am Native American, got long, luxurious locks. Love it. Love it. I wish I had. Uh, they did the Indians. What's that? Swanica Indians. Swanica Indians. I wasn't sure. They are the Raiders now. The says, holdout. Uh, Cindy Cohen. They're the holdout. So, oh, bald ink mohawk. Wow. Kestrel doesn't like bell bottoms either. You know what? You know, I've seen recently a, a tattoo for bald people. Really? Of hair. Of hair? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Hairline, just like this. And you can watch the guy do it. I, I, wear, uh, I wear tight jeans. An inhawk, Calhoun says. An inhawk. Inhawk. Well, we used to call that a no hawk, right? Where they would just shave. Football team 2004 shaved their heads for championship games. How about that? Football team in 04. I bet I know the team she's referring to. Um, still got your chain wallet from the sixth grade. Nice. We should get tattoos on uh, our bald heads. Do you want to tell your uh, grandmother that, Calhoun? Is that huh? You want to come and tell grandma that? ZW, See what my mom said? Best friend in high school is Native American and the most beautiful jet black hair. We had Seymour. I was about to We're say about to drop Seymour. We had a we had a a, a, a place called Freak. ABC, right? The ABC house. A better chance. Which was supposed to stand for a better chance. But that's not what everybody called it. That's not what everybody called it. They called it alcoholic beverage consumption, sadly. And boy, oh boy. They would bring they would bring uh Native Americans uh and put them up um, in uh, in town and send them to this really nice high school. They were the greatest lacrosse players for planet Earth. I'm not kidding you. Forget about and it. And where we went just... to school, lacrosse is kind of a, a big deal, right? Like lacrosse was a big, big deal. Um, not as big as football, but it was a big deal. And uh, and you know what? We didn't lose. No. Yeah. I mean, we did. We did not lose. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. It was but a lot of it because of because of that. Because of the sure. native, because of our native guys. Piano mom says love lacrosse. I played a lot of it there. Played a lot of it there. Um, I'm a lacrosse fan. My dad was a great lacrosse player. He's an all-American lacrosse player. 
and we grew up with lacrosse sticks. We had them before we knew what they did. We had them. <laughs> is it true that 90% of Native Americans are alcoholics? No, uh, that's not true. What is true is that 90% of uh, Native Americans have a gene that makes the ability to work um, alcohol through the system the way others do uh, more difficult. And because of that, uh, they are more um, uh, susceptible to alcohol abuse disorder and, uh, um, and alcohol um, you know, addiction in general. But no, that doesn't, doesn't mean that um, you know, 98% of them are, or 90% of them are, are um, you know, in the process of being uh, using uh, same with some Asians. That is the truth. There is, that is, uh, it has been found in, um, in Asian Islanders and, uh, and Native Americans. That is the truth. Uh, I threw out, jeans? I threw out like, um, a you bullseye. Have, you have tight jeans? Yeah, I have tight jeans. I threw out all of my jeans that weren't tight. Everything I had got loose. So I threw out everything. Tommy turns to the left. Hold on. When I turn this way, am I not looking at you? You're looking at me as far as I'm seeing. No, no, you're not. You you are there, but you're not on mine. I'll see you to the left. Okay, so what we got to do. Can you Calhoun, reverse? can you swap us, please? If you're uh, near your uh, if you're near your machine. If not, I can probably do it. I just don't know. Uh, tight jeans on men's should be a crime. Well, I don't know that I'm wearing skinny jeans. Um, I was in a store with Tommy looking for a pair of Praying jeans. hands in the back wouldn't be bad, Calhoun. That's Turns not... out I was looking at women's jeans. Oh, that was such a funny was day. Was that the funniest thing in the world? That was such a funny day. <clears throat> Hold on. There we go. Now, I look Let's this way. Let me see from how I see it. Yeah, you're good. All right. There we go, people. How's Perfect. that? Sorry about that. Thank you for sharing. A bullseye that. would be hysterical. With my luck, Calhoun, someone will shoot at it. You know what I mean? Like, that's the... Uh... Yes. Now I'm on your screen. Don, am I good? Am I good? Kristen Melinda says, skinny jeans are my sworn enemy. I've told this story before, but I'm going to tell it again. When I went to get sentenced on my last, the last time I ever got sentenced, the last time I ever did anything wrong, right? Uh, I went into court and I thought I was getting about 46 months. I got a hell of a lot longer than 46 months. Um, and I was having a pretty bad day driving away. And uh, and the I also had the cops, you know, it, as much as it's a city, it's a small town. and And... You know, I had been married to my attorney at that point. I was still married to my attorney. So, uh, it, you know, the cops were having a laugh at my expense. It wasn't a good day. And we were driving through the campus and there was a kid wearing the tight. Oops. Now he's on the right. I liked Tommy better on the left. Well, Donnie, you've done it. Now look what you've done. Anyway. Uh, so what happened is um, I, I start muttering to myself in the back seat, and the cop goes, uh, What's, uh, what's bothering you? I go, look at this guy in the jeans. I said, it's bad enough that I got to get sentenced in the, you know, to, to like a hundred months or whatever. I go, but this jack wagon here that's trying to look like J Justin Bieber has just absolutely uh, pushed me over the top. And he goes, uh, you want me to roll down the window? I said, could you? He said, yeah, no, I could do that. So keep in mind, I'm wearing, I'm not dressed like a street person, like, you know, like I, like I would be on the street because I'm pleading guilty. There's no uh, jury. So I'm just in, in, uh, you know, prison graves and, uh, I got, I'm shackled like this, you know, and it's obvious when you see the window come down in this, cause as the window goes down, there's a metal screen so that I can't jump out. These guys got to know I'm in a prison, a prison transport vehicle, but I yelled, Hey, <laughs> and the, the kid turns and looks at me and I just lit him up. I spent about 40 seconds telling him why I didn't think, uh, the skinny jeans that he was wearing that made him look like Justin Bieber were a particularly good, uh, you know, outfit choice for that particular time of year. It wasn't nice. And I'm sure that the guy turned and looked and was like, yeah, you're going to prison, loser. But it, it, it did cheer me up. Yeah, the, uh, the Indian peace symbol. Do, 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 do. Your old man wanted to hide when you brought that mohawk home. I can see that. I came over the area once. Oh, I remember that. Not I good. remember that. Not a good day. Yeah, uh, Johnny came home with an earring, and uh, Papa Scoville was uh, was impressed. 
if, uh, if I remember correctly, the conversation went like this. You can remove that or I will. It was something along those lines. It was something along those lines. You can take that out if you'd like. If not, I could. KD says, Spanx Calhoun, my friend, has a uh, tattoo code, uh, a barcode, and he added uh, made in Canada. I've seen a lot of people with that tattoo. That's a very popular tattoo in prison, and it is a very popular tattoo in prison to have right on the back of your head. There's a lot of people that have a barcode on the back of their head. Um, you know, what's funny too is on a prison ID, I don't know if I have one laying around here, but on a prison ID, you have a barcode. Yeah, I'm not going to lose any sleep over fine, but there's a barcode on a prison ID and you scan it so that you can't go through and eat twice. Nobody uses it. A couple of FCIs that I was at actually scan. Most of them do not. And you can go through as many times as you want, right? Um, if you take, we used to take the barcode off of a battery, right? And you could put it onto your, uh, so once you went through, they would scan your uh, deal. Then you could go back through and put the thing from that you would cut right off of a battery with a razor blade and go through and they would scan the, uh, the battery barcode. All I was looking for was the same barcode, right? So as long as the same code didn't get scanned twice in 20 minutes, you were set. But, uh, Wow. I, you know what? Somebody once brought this up in a chat that said, if I had a family member that had been in the Holocaust, I would have got that tattoo. And I thought, I said, I, I don't know. But that's, uh, I have met uh, a family of a Holocaust survivor that all get the number tattooed in the same place as their grandmother when they turn 18 in the same place. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I understand. For family, I get that. Yeah, I understand. It's just heavy. My yeah, son has they... a tattoo right here of a moose. Do you know what's really funny? If it does yeah, help, Johnny is really on my right. <laughs> not trying to not try to bum anybody out, but Johnny is on my right. He really is. See how that works, huh? Yeah. There we go. There's a video game called Hitman. Its main character has a barcode on the back of his dome. So this type of tattoo is also popular among gamers. Thank you so much. I did not know this. Shannon Smith says, Jewish faith is against tattoos because of the Holocaust. I could see that. I absolutely could see that. Info Dump Truck says, dark but respectable. That's probably a great way to put it, isn't it? That's dark, but I get it. That's a great way to put it. I never ever comment on people's tattoos because they got them for a reason. And, you know, I just don't ever do that. I don't uh, talk too much about people's tattoos. Ever. Well, you learn in prison, right? You, uh, it's there are a lot of people in prison who communicate literally through tattoos, right? Like that's how they—they're not guys that are going to say a whole lot to you. Russians so you like look that. at him, you look at him, and he's got three dots, right? And you go, "Ooh, I know what organization he's with." And then you start to go up the sleeves, and you're like, "Damn, he put work in, right?" I can look at the person's tattoos in prison, and I can tell you how much work that person's put in. When you, if your organization says, I need that guy stabbed and you go and you do it, as soon as you're done, they go, all right, you've uh, earned a tattoo. You got to see the look on their face when you say, uh, I'm all right. I don't want it. Oh boy. I'm telling you, it, uh, it went really, really bad. The guy said to me, yeah, well, you can get some bolts for that or you can get a Swazi. And I was like, yeah, uh, how about a rabbit? You know? Could I, uh, could I get a rabbit for that? I think I'd prefer a rabbit. Didn't really go over very well. What I did, no joke whatsoever, was uh, I agreed to get the tattoo in a place that people couldn't see it. And then uh, I lied about getting it. A lot of guys who don't want to go to the street carrying those tattoos will put it on a place uh, that you wouldn't normally want to put a tattoo. Um, yeah, but I never, I never took any of those. I don't have a, I don't have a swastika on me. I don't have any uh, lightning bolts on me. I don't have any of that garbage. Um, now how do I feel about tattoos on women? Uh, if, if, if the tattoo means something to the woman, then great. You know what I mean? Do you mean, do I, as far as do I want to see a woman really painted up in tattoos? 
Um, it's different. Uh, it's different for every woman. I've seen women with tattoos that I thought were absolutely gorgeous. And I've seen tattoos that I thought destroyed a woman. Um, but I, I would imagine it's the same with guys. Yeah. <laughs> Matrix Rabbit says, I have many tattoos. I have Eddie. Shut up. You got Eddie? That is unbelievable. That's unbelievable. There's a, there's a great scene in a movie with, um, with, uh, Sean Penn where they're getting ready to put the, uh, they're getting ready to put the, uh, the needle in, run an IV to take him off planet earth. And he's got Eddie. I think they're, they basically have to stick Eddie to put the, uh, to run it. Brenda says, I have no tattoos, not into it. Hubby doesn't either. You know, that's, it's rare to find uh, two people married these days that don't have tattoos. I mean, honestly, it's more than 50% now of the, uh, of the people, uh, at least in our country, more than 50%. It's um, funny. It used to be an issue for jogging. Now it's like, unless you yeah, got one yeah. here, you're pretty much okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> dead man walking. Yeah. But Tom, question. Asked, between the cracks has asked us a few times, light or dark outfit. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, I would go with dark. I would go with dark always. Um, but that's me. You know, when, uh, when I go to a, um, when I go to a, uh, a funeral, the last thing in the world you want to do is stick out. That's my humble opinion. I think the reason that everybody wears black is because you just don't want to stick out at a funeral. Right. It's the, the, it's a celebration of someone's life. And yeah, I would go with dark, but that's me. See, black is like my favorite color. Well, I, everything you own is black. It'd be pretty easy for you. I didn't want tattoos because they're identifying at first. Now I'm afraid of carcinogens. Boy, if you could see how I made my ink, I think you'd have a heart attack. You want to something funny? Tom and I were only in jail together once. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. We were in there going, I, I, I sat and looked at you and do you realize this is the first time we've been in jail together? Anyway, they took pictures of all, at that time, every tattoo I had, Tommy had, and every time, uh, tattoo Tommy had, I had. So the cops are like snagging pictures of us because they want to make sure who is who because he looks so similar. Well, and then every scar, I mean, honestly, when you get, it's it, when you're a, a convict and you get uh, busted, they get really, really into photographing you. They take all your clothing off. And then two people with cameras walk in circles around you, snapping photos of every single scar you got, every tattoo you got. I mean, then they sit and write it all down. You got three scars on the left bicep. You got two scars on the right. I mean, catalog, baby. Yeah, they catalog you. And what they're looking for, what's crazy is I have a steal your face tattoo. So if you're a deadhead, you know what that is. But in the middle of the skull is a lightning bolt. And the two bolts go side by side next to each other. And they make a couple of S's. On the other side, I have a three-leaf clover. And... I, I zipped through every prison I ever went to. And then I got to one and the guy goes, oh, you think you're slick? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he starts cataloging, you know, the, he's like, you got a three leaf clover, which is a, an Aryan brotherhood thing. I said, yeah, but there's no six, six, six under it, which is what they do. And I said, no, no, it's got nothing to do with any of that. But I spent two weeks uh, in a, uh, in the hole while I was under investigation. I'm like, I'm not a validated. I got none of that. And finally, the, the head of SIS, which is like the FBI inside jail, right? It's the, the investigative service inside jail. But um, the uh, SIS guy came in and sat me down for the first time for an interview. And I said, my wife's black. You knew this, right? And he just got a look on his face and he goes, for real? I go, yeah. And he starts going through my file real quick. And there's no picture of Emily. It just says that I'm married. And he's like, your, your wife is black. I said, yeah, she's an attorney. I'm like, man, I'm not. I don't have a prejudice bone in my body, man. You got the wrong dude. And that's when they let me out. You know, they let me, uh, they let me, but I was in the hole. They wanted, they wanted me validated as a gang member. And I was on an FCI and they don't really allow too many gang members on FCIs. Yeah, I Ron mean, if you're a fake gang member. Is the oldest of all of them. Yeah. That was a, that's a I got that. I got that when I was 16. I've had that tattoo since I was 16. Is there a document that shows symbols and what they mean? I hate to get a tattoo. Uh-huh. Yeah. Catherine, that's a great, great uh, question because I have friends, like I know a guy in prison who went to a tattoo shop and he picked flash art off the wall, right? And he got the death head from the Hells Angels on his hand and he got it at 17 and he was in prison and one of the guys walked up and just was like, hey, you're a brother? And he goes, a bro what do you mean? And he's like, wow. yeah. 
Um, but they uh, they were very kind to him. In all honesty, I've never seen anything like it. They were super kind to him. Normally, they are not. But when the story got explained and the guy just looked at him, he goes, you just got to get it removed, you know, and you got 24 hours. But they gave him all kinds of options for how to do it, right? They gave him options for you can cover it up. Um, I had seen a similar thing happen with a gang. Um, and they belt sanded it off of uh, off of the guy. When mm-hmm. We're not too particularly kind about it. Your husband has a sh- a lot of people have shamrocks. A lot, a lot of little, uh, three leaf clover lucky people. Johnny's got one, I think. Pretty sure he does. I do. Pretty sure he does. Hadn't gone anywhere. Your favorite uh, tattoo is a back piece, shoulder to say, hip, realistic what wings. Look like when you're old, I'm gonna tell you something. My shamrock tattoo is older than dirt, and it's for, it doesn't look any different than the day I got. Because it's never been in the sun. All these, all this stuff I got doesn't really. Have- my the, my uh, my sleeve where I'm in the sun is different than where it's not. You can see it. But I made my own ink. <laughs> talk about talk about being worried about carcinogens. You should see how ink is made in prison. It would scare the hell out of you. It's a black light. It is a black light. You need a stronger black light than that, though. That Johnny, that's not going to get it done. Um, eh, you're not going to get that's it done. It looks really cool, the black light. There are French towns in every province, but Quebec is the only one where French is the first language. And it is also the only one with St. Catherine Street. St. Catherine Street. Uh, well, how about that? Huh? How about that? We burn cardboard for ink. We do not. Um, cigarette ash? No. Uh, you get hair gel? Vaseline, um, those are the two big ones, hair gel and, uh, and Vaseline, um, or uh, pomade. Pomade is really big, and you make a candle out of it, right? So you, you spin line, so you make a wick, and you make a candle out of all of this um, hair gel and stuff so that the wick is in the middle, and you light that wick, and then over the top of that, you put a catch so that you're, you're not... If you look at a flame, you have three cones in the flame, right? Center cone is the hottest of the cone. Okay, well, if you let that burn at the outside, that's the dirtiest, and you catch carbon and all kinds of crap. It's it's a dirty flame. Well, you want the dirty flame. You want to catch all of that carbon, and you let that burn. You make it out of a tin can, right? You know, the, the candle part. And you let it burn until you've gone through probably four jars of hair gel and Vaseline and things like that. And you've caught all of that soot. And then you take all of that soot and it's literally, you know, you get a bag, uh, you know, and it'll be that thick in the bag, just a pillow of just black soot. And then that gets put into liquid and you put a couple of drops of um, of uh, baby oil in it. And then you just start shaking it up and you put a couple of uh, rocks in there so that the rocks help break the stuff down. And you will have to shake that for probably two and a half weeks. I'm not kidding. You know, three or four hours a day. And usually your cellmate will get in on it with you. So like you go in and you're doing this one and you slap it against your hand and you'll throw it to him. It's like your turn. And then he'll start beating on that. Um, It sounds like a cancer summoning ritual. Here's the crazy thing, people. A lot of the ink you get on the streets is made the same way. No joke. In Russian prisons, burnt rubber from the soles of boots is a common ingredient in tattooing. Checks out. Checks out. Maybe. Uh, I've watched people burning. Um, I've watched people do it with uh, um, styrofoam. I've watched people do it with plastic. Because it doesn't matter what you burn, right? But you got to let it burn a long time. Do I regret any of my tattoos? Yeah, yeah I do. Um, I regret most of my tattoos. Doesn't mean I would want them gone, Right? Doesn't mean I would want any of them gone. They're um, they are a, a uh, they are an important thing uh, for me, and I know that that probably doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but it really does to me. Um, well, ash is what you use, Lord Kiss Freak. I mean, for all intents and purposes, the trouble with ash is it it tends to be very gray. And what happens when you start put? Because I've watched people do it when you put it into the body, it starts to really um, sort of bleach out. Uh, the stuff that I made, I really made the darkest ink on planet Earth. I was uh, 
I was going for it. I couldn't stand the green color that people get on prison ink. So I was really going for black. Like I did way more. I burnt way more than most people do. I really, really, really regret without the desire to change the past. Yeah, there you go. I think that uh, that said it pretty well. Um, I am a uh, I am a result of all of the stupid things that I've done in my life. Right? Yeah, I want to know which one I regret. I regret I had a name right there. Yeah. My ex, I covered it, but there's a scar from an airbag. The juice came out of the yeah. airbag scar. It'll do a number on you. Have you have any scars on tattoos? Uh, I don't I've, know if I've I tattooed touch, I don't know over. If it'll be touch. I don't you know if it'll work. Yeah, you can tattoo over scars. This this whole uh, piece, this whole piece is a cover up of scars. If you look at it, you'll see the white. But I had to go in oh, so yeah. many times. Sure. sure. That took. That took. As long as that. Really? Yeah. Go over over. Because he just kept going over it night after night after night. You can tattoo. Uh, my first tattoo was by a guitar string. So was mine. Uh, not my first, but this entire thing right here is guitar string. That entire tattoo, 60 hours, all made with a uh, tattoo string and a homemade gun. And I made the gun too. Um, I was so afraid of catching something that I made my own barrel, I made my own needle, I made my own gun, I made my own ink. That was it. I wasn't I wasn't letting anything touch me that had touched somebody else. And all of that stuff about, well, you know, the only thing that touches now nah, just I'll just buy it, you know. There was a guy that had a Sony Walkman. I gave him five books of stamps for a Sony Walkman because it didn't play anymore. What is LKF? I have no idea what that means. Couldn't die. Can somebody tell me what LKF is? Because it's up there all the time and I have no idea what it means. So, and then I went down to the music room and I uh, bought part of a um, guitar string. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be where I'm at without the entire story, right? I mean, that's it. This is, uh, I am a conglomeration of, uh, of my mistakes. And LKF, that's Lord Kissfreak. Lord Kissfreak. Holy Kiss Freak. moly. I can't believe I didn't know. Well, uh, you know what? I'm bad at all of those things. Uh, da, 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 da. No, I am St. Catherine. I just love Canada, the whole world's people, actually. Uh, check out Rick for PM Laugh. No, I am St. Catherine. Oh, St. Catherine's. I, uh, I'm a fan of, um, of Canada. Canada's not a huge fan of me, but I am a big fan of Canada. Um, burning lint from prison laundry. Yeah, I can see that. I made a a pin cushion out of pill, a belly button lint once. It sounds weird. But... Tracy, um, yeah, no, you can absolutely, either. you can absolutely tattoo over scar. However, scars don't like accepting ink. So it is a process, right? The amount of time that I spent, my, my right bicep is really, really, really badly scarred, horrifically scarred. Then it was made worse by the first guy that tried to uh, tattoo. Um, my arm actually scarred me worse. He had, he made, the, the needle was bad. You haven't had a cigarette in four days? What's up, convict? Huh? Awesome, How good is that? Huh? You, you know, Kelly, now you, you, done, you done screwed up because at four days you can't go back. We know, we know 72 hours, all that's out of your system, right? You already proved you could do it. Now it's rinse and repeat. You're not doing anything new, right? The, the hard stuff's all behind you, Kelly. You nailed it. From here, it's just rinse and repeat, love. Doing the same thing over and over again. There's a library on the border. Sounds like an, a song by uh, Steely Dan. In the morning you go running. Sorry. Well done. Four days. You're over the hardest part. Damn straight, Layla. That's what I'm saying. Over the hardest part. Now it's just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. <clears throat> you has got to do the same thing today. You've done for the last three. You're, you're no longer a smoker. That's it. Shannon's going to Toronto in two weeks. Toronto is a great city. It really is. I, I, I dig Toronto. It's a great city. Um, when I was doing, um, when I was doing my uh, deal in Canada, that's where I spent most of my time. Although we weren't based there, it's still where I spent most of my time. You're going into lurker mode because you're going into Wally World to buy garden hose washers. So my garden hose will stop leaking. 
Well, if that works, I'm really happy for you. Mine just leaks. It's just one of those things. Correct, Sri <clears throat> What's that? Sri has got a good comment, but. I have a funny uh, trivia thing about the name Steely Dan, but it's not suitable for YouTube. It's wickedly accurate. It is wickedly accurate. <clears throat> you know what? You can church that up here. Check this out. It's an adult massager. Burroughs. James Burroughs, the author. Is it James Burroughs? No, Charles Burroughs. Charles. No. Look up author Burroughs and see what it says. Here, I can do it. Just decided to quit vaping with my daughter. What have I done? You and your lovely daughter are going to stop uh, vaping at the same William time. William Burroughs. William Burroughs. Thank you. William Burroughs, the author, uh, wrote about a um, an adult sex toy, right, to uh, satisfy the ladies. And that adult sex toy was called Steely Dan. Yep. And now you know. And now you know. The rest. The rest of the story. Thank you, Between the Cracks. It is William. William Burroughs. A junkie, by the way. Big time. He, uh, he wrote Naked Lunch. If you've never read Naked Lunch, you really need to. Odd, odd, odd story. All about drugs. Um, odd story. Debbie Logan says, yeah, you can do it, Kelly. I'm fighting it. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Yes, I said it, not you, Tree Hugger. I think you're safe. My tattoo artist worked one of my beauty marks into the Celtic tattoo, made it even more special. That is so cool. For real, that is so cool. Do, 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 do. Tampa B, I want to know if this works for you. And I am impressed that you are typing because I know your hands aren't doing real well right now. Why? Because you, like Lady Fiona Crispin, didn't get the memo that when two cats fight, maybe you let them. I know that that's hard, but you know, the fur flying, that starts flying before they even fight. It looks a lot nastier than it is, but they're going to hurt you every time. Lady Crispin needed surgery. You know, she's, she's still jacked up years later. You got to be really careful with them kitties. Eh, please. Because I'm a cat fan, Tampa B. I really am. But you are one of the few people on planet Earth I like more than I like cats. You know, there aren't too many I, uh, I like more than cats, but you're one of them. Tommy, uh, you used to board... Uh, to separate fighting cats, use a board. You know what? I use nothing to separate fighting cats. I kind of let them fight. I've I've never seen two cats kill each other. I've never actually seen that go down. I've seen them get really, really angry. I've seen it get really ugly, but I've never seen two cats kill each other. So I figure, eh, maybe they work it out, right? But I, every time I've seen a human being go in there and try to stop two cats, someone's getting really jacked up, right? I've never taken a cat to a uh, a vet after a cat fight. But I've taken human beings to the hospital after cat fights numerous times. Have you seen the I woman? Really close ones. Me go. Have you seen the old woman that does the tap tap tattoos? She's ninety. Yeah, you want to know something? I've not seen her, but I know the tap tap tattoos. Let and me I, tell I'm you not getting that one. I know somebody who knows her. She's from the Philippines. To figure out, she's one of the last that do it. And the last time I was there, they told me if I came back, they could have had me, her do a tattoo on me. She doesn't she, go by appointments only. You have to know, know her. She's, it's with a stick, and she wraps it, and she's amazing. And I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if it's one of those Steve-O tattoos. I just like her doing something on me. Plant Freak, great question. Plant Freak says, I am wanting to quit nicotine. Is there a suggested length of time after quitting? Uh, so many other substances. Super afraid of relapse. Um, my, my answer would be this. Um, I wouldn't be in a hurry, right, to to do anything that is going to uh, get you off of your path if your path right now is solid, right? I, I say to people that in the first six months to a year, right, uh, we quit 72 hours, the chemicals are out of our body. But for that first 365 days, we're, we're kind of a head case. I'm sorry, we really are. Um You'll listen to Steely Dan the same way, Z-Dub. I'm sending you a text here. Hopefully, it's afternoon to uh, Z-Dub. Uh, but, Plant Freak, you're the one that's going to be able to answer that question. If you feel like, are, and if you're, if it, nicotine, to me, um, reads different than cigarettes. I don't know how you're doing it. I don't know if you're vaping. I don't know if you're lighting uh, 
you know, leaves on fire and breathing them into your lungs. But maybe go harm reduction. Maybe start cutting down on the amount of nicotine that you're putting into your body because we don't need to, to add a whole lot of, um, of other stuff to you in that first 365 days. That's my humble opinion, but I'm not going to tell someone to, uh, to continue to do anything. If you're able to quit, do it. But I don't want to see it. You know, you're, you're a journaler. You're doing everything you're supposed to. So if you start trying to get off nicotine and it starts going south, like I, I've, I've backed off of Suboxone completely three times. Every time I've gone back on it. Because after four days off or seven days off, or once I made it, I think nine, but I start getting that feeling where, okay, wait a second. I'm starting to do, I'm starting to have cravings. I'm starting to have like all these things that I didn't deal with are starting to come back. Then why was it, why was I wanting to get off in the first place? That, you know, I, I couldn't remember exactly why I wanted to quit. Didn't seem like it made sense anymore. So now I'm down to, uh, to two milligrams most of the time. And there are some days I take a, a milligram and there are some days I take four, right? But I'm, uh, I don't know. I think it's, uh, it's uh, on a uh, case by case basis. Um, but I have a lot of faith in you, uh, plant free. You happen to be doing it the right way. Right. And, um, when you're doing it the right way, I'm a lot less freaked out about people trying anything. If that makes sense. Uh, Brianna says, I've been curious about Zin nicotine patches to try to quit smoking. I am an advocate of these. But I bought some other brand that's not Zen because like, they were having some kind of a special. And this thing hurt. It was so damn strong when I put it in my mouth, it literally hurt. I threw out the entire thing. I got to find someone who knows what they're doing and have them show me because um, I would like to uh, I would like to put down the vape completely. So I am working toward that as well. But um, I certainly am not going to do it at the uh, at the expense of anything. If it's that to make me feel uh, weird or any kind of way. I mean, to me. Uh, I'm not in a hurry. It may sound crazy. Sophia, it's going to happen again. Without a doubt, I'm taking him to the vet to figure out why he's got crotch rot mouth. Wow. Crotch rot mouth. That's a bummer. Crotch rot mouth. Yee. Calhoun, does that sound nasty or what? My doc says I cannot stop the cigarettes cold turkey. Question of heart. He wants me to slowly diminish. Katie, that's smart. That's smart, right? I don't, I don't suggest anybody does anything that's going to shock your system, right? I, I think that slow, that slow is better than fast. That's my humble opinion. I prefer, I prefer to be a vape person. If only it would work. Um, it worked for me. I keep a vape in my hand at all times, even when I sleep. Uh, I know a lot of people that sleep with a vape in their hands because it's different than cigarettes, isn't it? It's not going to set anything on fire. All righty, let's see. All right, I'm done. That's uh, It's been about an hour and uh, 23 minutes, and we will be doing more today, I promise. Between the cracks says, working for me. Um, I keep a close eye on this vape of mine. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Clonidine is a godsend for many. Uh, clonidine is, it does uh, slow down the heart. Um, you know, so be careful when you take it, but let's go New York Rangers. There you go. KD says, I tried vape, not for me. Well, then let's try something else so we can do some harm reduction right? We just want some harm reduction. We want to do things that are going to make you better. Am I on Rumble? I am. I am on Rumble. You can go over and check me out on Rumble. However, if you like me the way I am, maybe don't go check out Rumble, right? I'm a little bit more, um, I don't, uh, I don't knock the edges off on Rumble, right? Rumble is free speech. If you like me the way I am, keep watching here. You go and watch me on Rumble. You might not like me. Enjoyed today, Donna? I'm glad. Hopefully we will see you back here tomorrow. I am out of here, people. Where is my son? Gonna pop in. There it go. is I. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. What does it say on your shirt? Time to what? Uh, time to effing burn. Okay. There you go. Um, I got it at a metal show. That's not in the basket. 
The cat There's no there. basket cat. This, well, you know what it is, honestly? So now the, the uh, sun is coming up earlier in the day, and we go a little later in the day. So by this time, um, Calhoun, I mean, the, uh, the cat is now outside looking. She's at every window watching all of the birds that are coming in to do the eating thing. So we're not going to see a lot of squirrel ones. Oh, I uh, bet. Z dubs down to three or four cigarettes a day. Now, instead of picking up vaping as another habit, I wanted to just quit off the cigarettes. But do you think it's better to vape? No. If you can get off of the cigarettes, it's better to do nothing. Absolutely better to do nothing. And if you're down to three to four a day, see if you can do it without. That would be the better bet, to be sure. 100, 100 out of 100 times, the better bet is if you can just stop. Um, Tampa B, have a wonderful day. And uh, give your daughter a hug and a kiss. Tell her we're proud of her for uh, stopping that whole uh, vaping thing. Good stuff. All right, people, I will see you on the next one. Calhounis, have a great morning. See. Hey, uh, you going to call me? Uh, just stay here. All right. And then I won't even have to.